Hello, I want to welcome you to today's class. Today we'll be looking at formation of simple ions. Okay, let's get it started. As usual, every of my lecture starts with a quote. This is a quote from one of the great, greatest men that ever walked this earth, Martin Luther King Jr. He said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. The message here is that we need to keep working. We need to keep doing what we're doing. That there is usually no dull moment in this life. You need to keep being consistent in whatever you do. No matter how slow it is, it will count at the end of the day. Let us take it off. Our learning goal today will be one. We're going to know how to write the Lewis structure of atoms of representative elements. And two, we'll write the Lewis structure of ions formed when representative elements gain or lose electrons. Those are the two important objectives we'll be covering in this class. Now, the Lewis structure of elements. Um, the Lewis structure of elements actually depicts or represents all but the valence electrons you know you represent an element with the elemental symbol but the valence electrons what that means is that you have a symbol of an atom you now use dot we usually represent with dot to represent the valence electron remember earlier we talked about the valence electron the valence electrons of course are electrons that are located at the atomal shell or the highest energy level of the atom. Of course, remember that in the earlier in, in, in the earlier modules, we we also determine the fact that they determine the chemical pro properties of that atom, and also they also determine the group in which the atom is placed in the periodic table. So the valence electron plays a very much important role. In fact, that is the main reason we're studying chemistry in the first place. All the chemical properties of elements are as a result of that valence ability for it to either lose or gain uh, electrons, uh, gain gain electrons or lose electrons in that valence shell. Okay, so how do we determine the valence electrons in actually the valence shell? How do we know the number of electrons in that most shell or the valence shell of an element? It's easy to do this. There could be other ways to do this but for this class we're going to be taking it the easier way what is the easier and the more simpler form to do this now you refer to the periodic table usually you have your as i'm telling you in my class i advise you to have your periodic table at hand my periodic table is here with me so if you refer to the periodic table and you know that the number of valence shell electrons in an atom of all the representative elements now, when we are talking about the repetitive elements, we are talking about from group 1A, group 2A, group 3A, group 4A, group 5A, group 6A, group 7A, and group 8A. All these classes of elements, if we can know the group in which they belong, the valence electron is equal to the group Roman Romera group number. Remember, in the American designation of the periodic table, we see we use the Roman numeral. Uh, that is not generally used. But at this point, using this is very good because it helps you to figure out the valence, the number of valence electrons in that atom. So that is what this number does for you. In that. So a good example we have here is that, see, magnesium, if you look at your periodic table, is in group 2A. It's in group 2A because it's in group 2A. It has two electrons in its outermost shell or in its valence shell. Now, again, if you look at another example here, um, chlorine, again, chlorine is in group 7A. And what that simply implies is that it has seven electrons in each atomous shell. So you can easily do this exercise if you see that in any test or an exam. Provided we are talking about representative elements, the Roman numeral number in which they belong will always correspond to the valence shell electrons now how do we now draw this lewis dot structure of this element you see 
I have a couple of things I wrote here. Okay, we can go through it, but I'm going to do it usually for me. Practicing is usually what makes you to understand. The first thing you need to do, the most important, is you have to write the element symbol. You have to write the symbol of the element. And of course, we said use dot to represent the number of these valence electrons. Now, what we usually do by convention, imagine that there are three cardinal points around this atom. So assuming I have an atom, let's say I have an atom of X. I imagine, let me use another color, that there are three cardinal points this way. So I'm going to represent some electrons with dot in this way, electrons in dot this way, and some electrons this way, and this way. Of course, the maximum that every one of them we have for representative element will be eight electrons in the atomic shell. We said that earlier. So this is what we're going to, so we're going to imagine a four side around the atom and then begin to put this dot. Now element with four valence electron, of course, will have one dot in all sides. So if I have this, I'm going to have four dots on the fourth side around the four sides of this atom. So if I'm going to have one with the fifth one, okay, look at what I'm going to do. So if this one has four already, I'm going to have a fifth one. What it means, I'm going to go to another side and put it. Now, each side will have to have a maximum of two dots. We cannot go more than this number of dots to represent those electrons. So I think the next thing we're going to do now, we're going to try to see some examples of this. So potassium, of course, K is in group 1A. What that simply means is that it has one electron in that atomic shell. So I'm going to put one dot around it. Again, a good example, gallium, another element, if you look at it, is in group 3A. It will have three dots around itself. And then element barium, barium is element number four. And barium is in what is in group two, of course. Sorry, not barium, beryllium, rather, sorry. Beryllium is in group two. Element number four, it belongs to group two. What does that tell you? It tells you that it's going to have, it belongs in group two, A. And then it's going to have, what, two dots around its symbol. So... We're going to take up this. Let's do some examples here. Oh, I have my first example here too. I have the same potassium. Okay, that's starting from a very familiar tone. So potassium ha, is in group one, of course. You don't need to tell me the group. If I ask you this in exam, just go straight and give me. But of course, you know that this guy belongs to what? Group 1A. So it's easy for us to do this. So what it means is that the Lewis dot structure is going to be K. We just put one down. That is easier for us to do. Now, magnesium, of course, magnesium is in group 2A. Again, magnesium belongs to group 2A. It's easier for us to know this. So, the Lewis structure is going to be Mg. You put one dot on this side. I'm going to find another side and put the dot. If you have only two, don't put the dots on one side. Just clean it up and make it look a little bit good. Okay, look at this. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is a non-metal now. Belongs to group 5. Yes, of course, it belongs to group 5. 5 is... Um, belongs to group 5. 5 is VA. If it belongs to group 5, what do we do? So what we do is we have the sign of this guy, and then we put, first of all, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're not exhausted. It has 5 electrons. Remember, it has 5 electrons. The other electron is going to be on any side you choose to put it, so I'm going to put it this side. So these are the lowest structures of these three elements. Let's go again. This is very easy to do. Selenium. Selenium is, of course, selenium is in group C. It belongs with oxygen and sulfur. This is group C. What group C means is that they have what? They have six electrons in the atomic shell. So I'm going to put a symbol of selenium, and then I'm going to put one one dot and all four sides first I have four remaining two so i'm going to put one here and then i'm going to put another one here this is the lewis dot structure of selenium so what about bromine bromine of course is in group seven bromine is in group seven a what that means is that it has seven electrons in its atomic shell if i'm going to write the symbol i'm going to say br i'm going to put one one dot on each side first of all and when that is done, so this is 4, we're going to put another one here, 5, 6, and 7. That is the Lewis dot structure of bromine. Then gallium. Gallium, if you look at it, is in group, group 3A, has three electrons outside, so it will be, again, group 
a it has of course three electrons in that mole shell what are we going to have is that we're going to have g a we're going to say one two and three and that is the lewis dot structure of gallium you, you always feel free to pause this video try out these problems and always come back to them and check your answers and for better comprehension noble gas configuration we're going to introduce another important time you see the noble gases, I usually tell my students that these noble gases are so comfortable. That's what we call them, noble gases. They do not need anything from you because their valence shells are completely full. So noble gas configuration is that is the existence of two electrons in the valence shell of helium. Remember, helium has just two electrons and eight electrons in the valence shell of other members of the group, eight elements. And those guys are these. From neon, argon, kryptonium, xenon, and random. All these guys have eight electrons in the atomic shell. That is why we call them the noble gas configuration. It is unique. It is only this group that will have eight electrons or a completely filled valence shell, and they are very stable. In fact, that's the more reason why they do not get involved in a lot of reactions, or do not get involved in any reactions at all. Now, octet rule. What is octet rule? Now, the tendency of the representative element of course usually from group 1a to group 7a element to react in ways go into chemical reactions to achieve the electron configurations that looks like those of these noble gases so what it means is that they either become eight or they either become two of course hydrogen helium the small element will react in ways to achieve two electrons which is the electronic configuration of helium because it has to achieve the electronic configuration of those uh this thing that is closest to them the distance that is very close to them now the rest of the atoms the rest of the atoms will achieve the octet through configuration of eight every other ones want to react in ways to achieve eight except this three that is already listed so and this eight is actually what we call the octet rule and the two here we call it actually the duplet rule so how does a simple ion form? Remember, that is actually what we're looking at today. Now, atoms will gain or lose enough electrons to achieve the outer arrangement or those configurations that are identical to the number of gases. Remember, we just said that in the previous slide, that precede them. So that particular configuration of gas or gas that, if, that is very close to them is what they're going to look like. And in the process, what do they form? They form simple ions. Now, they do not change. What only changes is the number of electrons in the atom shell because they either gained or lost. However, the identity of the atom is preserved because what determines the identity of the atom is the number of the protons. The protons remain the same, but the number of electrons will always will change in that process. They will form simple ions. So simple ions are atoms that have acquired a net positive or a net negative charge either by losing or by gaining electron, respectively. When they become positive charge, what it means is that they have actually lost an electron. If they become negative charge, they have actually gained an electron. And the one, an atom that has lost an electron and becomes positively charged is called a cation. Whereas the one that has gained an electron and becomes negatively charged is called an anion. If you look at this now, sodium, look at the Lewis structure of sodium. Sodium has only one dot here. Now, it loses that one electron at this point and then it becomes sodium plus why it becomes sodium plus is because it now loses it doesn't have enough electrons so how do you actually determine this charge what you do in determining this charge is you calculate the number so charge actually let's say oh i'm gonna put in this if you want to calculate the charge now so the charge will be the number of sodium has how many protons of course the proton doesn't change it has 11 protons then how much, remember, it has lost one electron in this case. So what it means, it has 11 electrons initially as a neutral atom, and now loses one, it now remains 10. So if you do 11 minus 10, that's going to give you what? One. So that is why it has one plus as the charge. The same thing goes on here. Chlorine has seven electrons on that more shell. For this shell to be completely filled, it just needs one more. What it does is that it gains one more electron, and then it has a complete shell. However, it has acquired a net charge of this of gain. If you want to calculate the charge, you look at the number of. So here, 
at this point, it, the number of proton it has is still the same. It is number 17 minus, it has gained one electron. That means the number of electrons has increased to 18. So 17 minus 18 will give you negative one. And that is why it acquires a net charge of negative one. So simple ion examples. Calcium has a valence electron. Calcium has two valence electrons, of course, in group two. What it does, it's going to lose these two electrons to become what? Plus two charged. So if you want to write the symbol, it's usually written as the symbol of the element. Then you put the charge in a superscript with a sign, plus or minus. In this case, the Ca2 plus. Phosphorus has five valence electrons. It's a non-metal, of course. From non-metal, from, from group five till group seven, will always gain. This guy will gain how many electrons? It's going to gain. Let's say again. It will gain three electrons. And then we'll form a charge of negative, a charge of negative three. And you write it in this symbol. Chlorine, on the other hand, chlorine is in group what? Chlorine is in group seven electrons. Remember, it just needs just one more electron. It's in group seven. It needs one more electron for it to be filled. So what it does is that it's going to gain one electron. And then it's going to form a simple ion that will be written like this, in this chart. Now, in writing the symbol of simple ions, by convention, you do not need to put all the dots on each side, except most times when it's stated. So usually, the shortcut for usually writing this, we're going to see it as we move on now, is usually, you know that this is full, they don't usually write it. They just put only the symbol of this. So this and this is the same thing. All right, we move to the next slide. So important thing, before we do some, there's an exercise we're going to do in a table. Before we do that, let us look at, this important, uh, this this very uh, important, uh, this very very important information. Now, okay, I want to also do something. I think there's something I forgot actually. So I want to show you. I want to use some of this example and show you how this element actually lose or gain electrons. And we we did some of those uh, in the previous page. I want to show you how to write this. So as I mean, I want to write this for sodium. Let me try to write some of those. Okay. So it's going to be calcium, of course, initially. We have two dots. Now, the electron is shown after the arrow for metal. So what it means is that calcium is going to gain two plus. It's going to become two plus and it's going to lose two electrons become two D. So this is how you write the electronic transfer or loss of electron by a calcium atom. So if that of this now, for non-metals, like that, what you saw in this page, for the non-metals, the electrons gain is usually shown to the left. So what, what are we going to have here is that phosphorus, of course, we have how many dots? Five dots is in group five. We're going to put dots around this, so I'm going to put two on this side. What it means is that it's going to gain three electrons, and then we're going to form the phosphorus ion, or you can say the phosphide ion. That's what we call it, the phosphide ion. We we'll drop uh, the last part of the OUS, and that put IDE. So we call it the phosphide ion. The phosphide ion or phosphide here called calcium for the non-metals you just use your normal names to call them this is calcium ion the same thing goes for chlorine as well chlorine is going to do what it's going to is a non-metal so it's going to gain one just like phosphorus phosphorus here and then become chlorine ion so we're going to use some we're going to see information on this table we're going to use it to as an important guide in solving the next problem so just know in summary Representative elements will, will form ions having the same representative metals. Remember, metals are placed on uh, the left side of the periodic table. So they will form ions having the same positive charge as their Roman numeral number. The Roman numeral number will be their charge. So magnesium is in group 2. Magnesium is in group 2. It's going to be 2 plus. Aluminum is in group 3, it's going to be L3+. Plus. Group, aluminum is in group 3. Now, uh, let's use sodium. Sodium is in group 1, it's going to be N+. Plus. So you see, this is group 1, 1+. Plus. Group 3, 3+. Three plus. Group 2, 2+. Plus. Then, what about representative non-metal? Non-metals will have a charge that is equal to their group number minus 8. The group number of those elements minus 8. A good example, phosphorus is in group 5. Remember? 
So if phosphorus is in group 5, he wants to just gain. Okay, let me use this one. Phosphorus is in group, of course, let me say the first thing I have here. Cadmium in group 2A will form Ca2+. Phosphorus is in group 5. Now, it just needs three electrons to get filled. What it means is that the best way to calculate it, if you don't want to memorize it, is to say, okay, the group number minus 8. If you do 5 minus 8, that will give you negative 3. Therefore, phosphorus will form a 3 minus ion. And now, if you want to calculate just the charge of an element, the charge of an ion, the charge of an ion is equal to the number of protons minus the number of electrons. And I did this earlier in one of my examples. We're going to use this knowledge to solve, to complete this table. We say complete the table below. What are the important things we're going to know? Remember, earlier we talked about that the atomic mass of an element is A is equal to A. The number of protons plus the number of neutrons. You remember this, right? Now, we're dealing with charged atoms now, not ions. So, the number of electrons will not be equal to the number of protons because they are charged. They have lost electrons. Now, another important thing we need to bear in mind in solving this problem too will be, um, we can also remember what I said, that the charge of an element charge is equal to the number of protons minus the number of what? Electrons. If we have these three things in mind, we're going to use it to complete this table. The first one, gallium. It says gallium 3 plus atomic number 71, atomic number. It says what is the atomic number? Of course, the atomic number is always the number written at this point. We can easily write this one, that one. The number of protons, of course, is equal to the atomic number. Remember that Z, the atomic number, is always equal to the number of protons. Of course, this is going to be 31. Now, what about the number of electrons? How do we find this out? Now, the number of electrons, we can find it out in two ways. There are two ways you can find it out. You can decide to solve it from this equation. Or, you can decide to do what? If you don't want to solve it from this equation, you can use your common sense, which basically students do. Okay, you know, gallium has that one electrons in a neutral atom. It has that one electrons. But now, this shows that it has lost three electrons. So, what you do is that one minus three. That gives you the remaining number of electrons. So that's exactly what you're going to do. So if you do that 1 minus 3, that's going to give you, which is basically what is this? This which, which is, okay, let me go to the next page. So which is, remember, you say charge. This is the blank page I left for solving problem. So the number of proton it has is that 1. Oh, remember, we're looking for the number of electrons. Okay, I'm going to so look for. So if you solve for this now, let's solve for this. If you solve for this, the number of electrons will go this way. This will give you simply E will be equal to P minus the charge. It lost. So it lost three. So we know that it is number 31 and it loses. And the charge is what? Three. So that one minus three is going to give you 28. So the number of electrons is going to be what? 28. If you want to use those formulas. That's the reason why I wrote them first. So because they're going to help you. Now, the number of neutrons, again, how do you calculate it? Remember, atomic number is proton plus neutron. So, the number of neutrons will be the atomic mass minus proton. That's easy. So, 71 minus 31 is going to give us what? It's going to give us 40. And, of course, what is the atomic mass? That is shown, 71. And, of course, the charge is also shown here, which is 3 plus. So, that is how you solve this. And now, I say, what is the name of this? Now, to name metals or cations when they form when when they are formed you just need to say the full name of the element so i'm going to say gallium ion that's how we name them the full name of the element and you put an ion next to it now the next one potassium we know potassium so how do we work potassium is in group of course we know it's in group one it's gonna of course do what so at least the first thing we know is that potassium ion is gonna be 1 plus is in group 1. It is constant. It's going to always lose 1. So it's going to form 1 plus charge. Now, and we know that potassium is number 19. So this is constant. We know this. These are two that we can easily figure out without having to worry so much before I begin to think of that. Now, we don't know the atomic mass yet. So we're going to try to figure that as we move on. So the atomic number, of course, is number 19. And the number of proton is 19. That's what it tells us. So how do we now figure out 
the atomic mass. Of course, atomic mass is number of proton plus neutron. So what do we do? We have the number of proton to be 19. 19 plus 20 will give us what? 39. So we're going to have 39 at this point as the atomic mass. And of course, it's in group 1. It's going to only lose 1. What that means is that we're going to have plus 1 charge at this point. Now, the next one, the last we're going to solve now will be um, non-metals. We start. For the non-metals, of course, the first thing I like to uh, go to the atomic number first. The atom, you see this from, from this symbol now, the atomic number is 8, is the subscript, and that is also the number of protons. It doesn't change. Now, again, we can figure out something because we have the superscript here to the left. It means atomic mass. So we can easily go figure out the atomic mass. So the atomic mass is number 16. Is this table? We put it 16. And then we can also figure out the charge. The charge is already 2 minus given to us. That's easy for to figure out. Okay, what about, let's go to the next one. What about the number of, we now have the atomic number. We don't have the number of neutrons, but we can figure that out. How do we figure it out? Of course, the number of neutrons will be, of course, if you run this equation, neutrons is atomic number minus protons. So this is atomic number 16 minus the proton 8. So we're going to have our neutrons to be 8 as well. And then we have two left. How do we calculate the number of electrons? Again, common, we can use our common sense or we can use this formula, any one that works for you. Now, this um, oxygen is number 8 in a neutral atom. It just number 8. And it's going to gain 2. By being 2 minus 1, it gains 2. So if it is number 8 and it gains 2 electrons, it's going to be 10 electrons at the end of the day. And then the name of most non-metals, like I said earlier, will be you're going to remove oxygen. You're going to cut out the gene at the last and just say oxide. That's how we name them. We'll put IDE and then to their last name and remove. We'll, put, we'll replace this with their last part of their name. The last syllabi in their name or the last syllables in their name and put this okay if I don't know much about English I hope what I said is correct let's go to the next one nitride nitride oh sorry I'm always giving it almost giving it away number seven atom number seven means we have a nitrogen atom in the first place and now the number of it has 10 electrons what does that tell you that tells you that if number seven means nitrogen what it means is it has it has gained 3. So to know the charge on this element, we just say 10 minus 7. And that will give us what? 3 negative. That means the charge is 3 minus. That's just gained 3. It's an anion. And that is a nitrogen. Now, what else are we going to do? We want to calculate. Uh, we have the number of protons, of course, is 7. If we want to calculate the atomic mass, the atomic mass will be the number of protons. and the neutrons. So we add 7 plus 8. That is going to give us. 15 and that's what and how do we name it again we're going to drop the nitrogen nitrogen we're going to say nitrogen so we're going to drop the last name so this is nitrogen let me write this what do we do we're going to drop from here we're going to put ide so we're going to call it nitride and that is how we finish we're able to complete our table i didn't use much of the blank space anyways so this common table I, show, I, I showed you, or you are looking at now, shows you the monoatomic ion. You see, like I said earlier, for the only representative element, this can apply. For group 1 element, it will always form a charge of plus 1. Group 2 will form a charge of plus 2. This is constant. Group 3 will form a charge of plus 3. Group 4 are not involved in this because most of them are metalloids. Then group 5, so group 5 will form a charge of negative 3 because they are not metals they will not begin to gain group 6 will form a charge of negative 2 and group 7 will form a charge of negative 1 now the group 8 elements do not form any charge they do not form do not form any charge they do not form charges at all these guys do not form charge however if you look at the transitional element the transitional elements have variety of charges which are common some of them have one like scandium only has a one single one stable charge titanium has three plus and four plus vanadium three plus and five plus and a couple of others so there are a few of them that have only one charge that is worth noting uh, but again indium is important too that is worth noting it only has one charge but the rest of them you see these are the charges they will have and it's important to be able to use 
you use the understanding of the group of this element to know these charges of these elements or the ions formed from these elements. Now let's do this problem. It says indicate the Lewis structure of ions formed from the following element. Again, what do you have to do first? Remember, if it's a metal, you're going to look at that. If it's group one, two, or three, the metals, they have to do what? They're going to lose. So the visual level of students try to work out something. So potassium has a Lewis structure of one dot. What that means is it's going to lose that one dot. Of course, if you want to write the electron transfer, it's going to be to the right. It's going to lose that one dot and become K plus and the one electron will be floating. So the Lewis structure for the ion it forms will actually be, it has lost anything, nothing is remaining. So you're going to write the Lewis structure K plus. This is what the Lewis structure will look like. K plus, that's the Lewis structure. Magnesium, again, belongs to what group? Group two. So the Lewis structure is going to be dot and dot. What that simply means is that it's going to lose two electrons to form charge of plus two. Of course, it's going to be plus two electrons. And what it means is that the Lewis structure of magnesium is going to be Mg2 plus. What about nitride? Nitride is now a non-metal. It's going to gain. Remember, when you're writing the electron transfer charge for those gaining, you're going to put it to the left side, the number of electrons. So if I write the Lewis structure of nitrogen, it has five electrons. It's in group five. Look at that. It's in group five. Five electrons. So this has five dots. It's going to gain extra what? three electrons and then it's going to form nitride ion what it means is going to form an ion that is full that has eight electrons in that moisture <coughs> it's going to be this now this is usually what it's supposed to be but commonly it is written as a shortcut as n3 minus if you write any of the, any one of them for me i'm going to take it it doesn't really matter <coughs> excuse me n3 minus let's go to the next one the next page which happens to be the last page of this lecture it says indicate the lewis structures of ions also formed from the following element again selenium is in group six what it means is that it's a non-metal it is going to gain you're going to have six dots so i have six dots now one of these dots are clustered so i'm going to rewrite this so one two three four five six group six now what it means is that it's going to gain two electrons to become a noble gas close to it so what it what does that become it becomes selenium it will not have how many dots around itself it's gonna have let me make the dots a little bit thick around itself and then because it gains two electron the charge is gonna be two minus so this is what the Lewis structure will always look like but rather you write it as se2 minus bromine also, a non-metal is in group seven. Bromine will has seven is in group seven, so it will have seven dots, seven electrons around it. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven dots. So what it means is that it's going to only gain one electron to complete that octet to eight. And what it means is that it is going to be bromine, just bromine that has complete field dot around itself and because it only gains one of course the charge is going to be negative one or most likely represented as b arrow minus more commonly and the last but not the least and the last solution we're going to do in this particular module this particular module aluminium is in group three a what that means is that the charge is going to be three plus so we're going to write it again aluminium of course, three dots around it. Of course, in this electron transfer, it is written to the right after the arrow. So it's going to form aluminum three plus, which is group three where it belongs, plus three electrons. And this is, of course, this is the Lewis structure. Lewis structure is Al three plus. That is the Lewis structure of the ion formed from aluminum. So this is the end of this module once again thank you for listening if you do have any question you can always contact me through the usual channel thank you for listening and do have a wonderful day